Good morning, everybody. Corey here. Uh, I'm going to go over the trades and holdings for yesterday. It looks like it was September 18th. Uh, just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. All I'm doing is gathering the data and transforming it for you. Yield Max ETFs are extremely risky. Make sure that you have read their prospectus, including the updated pers prospectus, and understand the risk involved in these. All right, so I am sitting outside, so you'll probably hear all these crickets, possibly even cows. I don't know. I know I'm hearing something <laughs> from far away. Uh, you may not hear that on your end. Um, I did come outside because uh, my husband is here and awake, and then my daughter is here as well because apparently um, in the little old uh, country bumpkin town that we are at, there's actually been bomb threats. So they have canceled school, or not bomb threats, but uh, sorry, I guess that's like <laughs> military stuff. Um, there have been threats made on the school. Uh, as far as shooting it up and stuff. So, they've canceled school. Everybody's inside. I came outside to get away. Because what happens when they're around, whether they're awake or asleep, I tend to talk lower. And it's not that it's not necessarily intentional. I don't think about it. It's just a habit. And then I get lots of complaints that I'm not talking loud enough. So... I just figured I would come outside, enjoy the fresh air, drink my coffee, and go over the information with you. So we're going to jump straight in. I'm not going to go over all the mumbo jumbo today. I don't think we have any new people here. Um, so we're just going to jump right in. If I am wrong and we do have some new people that need me to explain a few things, uh, feel free to let me know. Did I put these in alphabet? No, I didn't, but there's not a lot here. So, it'll be all right. All right, so as you can see, if you're just looking for the trades, these are the trades. This is it. This is all of them. So, NVIDIA, Misty, Fiat, and Dips. Um, so, if you were looking for anything else or whatever, if you just want to stick around um, to see where we're at as far as, you know, what the holdings, all the data looks like, whatever... Feel free to do so. Fast forward to your favorite ETFs if you would like. Or put me on like two times or whatever if your mind can handle that. All right, so we have Abney here. Uh, so today is Thursday at, in the pre-market. This is the most I've ever seen the futures up in the pre-market. So I don't know. I'm sort of scared that it's up so much that when the market opens that we're going to tank. So I don't know what's going to happen. I was actually surprised when we got a half a... Uh, Point cut yesterday that the market even went up. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen today, but just a reminder, these are as of yesterday, uh, close of yesterday. So Abney had the one, oh, so what I was going to get at is tomorrow is um, September 20th. And so since it is Thursday, we'll have a lot of trades today and tomorrow uh, to go over. So that's why there's not a lot today. Uh, and most of these will expire tomorrow. Uh, unless it says otherwise, and yellow. I'll try to remember to point those out. Uh, but we have this short call here for Abney, 120 strike price. We're over this 2%, $2.42. So no upside here for the short call, and we do not have a bought call for Abney. Moving on to AIYY. Um, hold on, I said NVIDIA, and which other one? Because I'll get on a roll and forget. Okay, Misty. Apologize for that. Uh, AIYY, we have a short call to 2350 strike price. We're under that 1% or 23 cents, possible upside of about 9 cents here. We do have the bought call of 2450. Um, we are underneath that. Um, sorry, I was thinking we're underneath that 5%. And uh, somebody mentioned, wasn't Doug, uh, who was it? Shoot, Patrick, I think it was. Mentioned something about it'll be interesting if the market does go up today with all of these with the bulk calls on them and how they perform. I know we've seen how some of them have performed this week, um, but we may see a lot more. 
but also a lot of these don't have bought calls either. The, some of the ones that I would have thought would have had bought calls don't have bought calls. Anyway, moving on. Uh, bot call, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's move on to AMDY. Um, we have a short call with 155 strike price. Uh, AMD did go down yesterday. Oh, bunny, bunny. I get distracted easily. Here, yeah, buddy, buddy, buddy. I know, I'm calling it like it's a cat. Oh, Right, sorry for the distraction. Um, so we're underneath the strike price of 155 by 4%. Possible upside here of about 59 cents for the short call for AMDY. Uh, we also have a bought call on this one, a 160 strike price, but we're underneath that 7%. That bunny's got to go away. It's distracting me. All right. Um, AMZ. Looking here at the... Uh, so, AMZ did go down a few cents yesterday. We have a short call of 187.50. We're underneath that 1%, which is about a dollar right now. About 11 cent upside for uh, AMZ here. For the short call, but we also have a bulk call here with the 192.50 stripe price. We are underneath that 3%. Then we have Apley here. We have a short call of 220 stripe price. You can see we're over that by 69 cents. It looks like Apple went up $4 yesterday. So no upside for the short call. We do have some bulk calls here. Uh, split again. This is the first one that I've seen split on the bulk calls, but we have a 22050 and a 225 strike price for those. We're underneath those one and two percent at this moment. Ooh, and the the magnificent babu. So I know I mentioned yesterday, and y'all probably don't. Most of you probably don't think this is funny, but. It makes a little fun with us that I mentioned, you know, what y'all wanted to do, Babu or Babo, and we had, the majority was Babu, and then I looked it up, and it reminded me of Hey Boo Boo <laughs> off of Yogi Bear, and then uh, Doug said the reason that he mentioned um, he wanted it Babo because it makes him think of the Jungle Book, so then I go look the Jungle Book up because I've never watched that, or I've never really, I guess, paid attention or cared for it. But, uh, yeah, it has a Baloo. So, when you when I say Babu, <laughs> he's thinking of that. So, you have Babu, you can think of that, Bamboo, ba Baloo, Boo Boo. <laughs> anyway, I know. Y'all don't think I'm funny. That's okay. Um, so, anyway, let's move on. So, we have the short call of $87 strike price. We're underneath that 3% at 8442 uh, possible upside for the uh, short calls of about 61 cents. All right, uh, let's move on to Coney. So, uh, oh, the bunny left. Coney, we have three short calls, 162.50, which were over 14 cents. Um, and then we have the 170, we're under 4%. 172.50, we're under 6%. The 172.50 is where the majority of the contracts are. And then we have um, about 6,600 contracts at the other two. Sorry, the 172.50 is 22,000. So upside here, if we're just looking at the short calls, you know, I don't know. I don't know, maybe 35 or something cents. But of course, you know, it's probably going to go up more than that based on the synthetic values, not to mention we also have the bought calls here. Um, so it does have a number of bought calls to match its short calls. Uh, it has a 180 and a 182.50 strike price. So we're underneath those 10 and 11%. And I didn't look at Bitcoin this morning, so I'm not sure where we're at for that. Um, but anyway, let's move on to Dizzo. Dizzo, we have a 92 Strike price were over that 2%, $1.58. Uh, so no upside here for the short call. We also do not have a bought call for Dizzo. So moving on to Phoebe, 540 strike price. We're underneath that 
two dollars seven cent upside for phoebe for the short call uh, we do not have a bought call for this one gdxy short call of 41 dollars strike price we're underneath this five percent possible upside of about 83 cents for the short call for gdxy we do not have a bought call then we have GUI here with the short call of 157.50 stripe price. We are over this about $2.30, so no possible upside for the short calls. We do have a bought call. We're underneath this 19 cents. So we'll see how that goes today. JPMO. Hmm. I see that this one did not change. This is the one I mentioned yesterday on how we have bought calls for next week. I thought maybe, or no, I'm sorry. We just had these calls, meaning bought. I guess that was the wrong word. They opened up this new position. I thought maybe they sold 500 of the 1100 and that they would correct it today's, but that's not the case, so it's still here. So our synthetic, we still only have 1,100 shares, but for um, our short calls and our bought calls, we have 1,600. So we'll see. I don't know. The only time that I've ever seen it and know that they were allowed to have uh, them off, I say allowed, I mean, I don't know, but um, they leave on on the, um, the short ETFs, you know, if they'll leave on the, some of the long calls um, when they close them out, when they close out, you know, the short put or whatever else, they'll just leave some of the long calls on because they don't get a lot of money to uh, when they close those out. But that's the only time that I've seen that they've, you know, allowed their stuff not to be in sync, meaning the same number of shares for the synthetic um, short calls, bot calls, you know, puts, all that stuff. Um, anyway, so, you know, just going by what's here, they have a short call of 202.50 for this week. Um, and then to go with that, they have the bought call of 205. Of course, we closed yesterday at 207.53. And then we have for next week here, we have a short call at the 212.50 straight price. We're underneath that 2%. Uh, but then we also have a bulk call, but it's a two seventeen fifty underneath that five percent. Um, no upside here for the short calls by themselves. Moving on to Murney. Murney, we have two short calls. Um, we have a sixty nine and a seventy three stripe price. The they did go down yesterday, so it looks like we're only eighty six cents above the one stripe price. Of $69 where the majority of our contracts are um, of course no upside for the short calls and we also have a bought call but it's a $76 strike price and we're underneath that 8% MSFO we have two short calls 435 and 440 we're underneath those 1 and 2% uh, we're looking at about I don't know maybe about a 15 cent or so increase for the short calls there. We do not have a bought call for that. Then we have Misty. I didn't actually look at the trade, so let's just make sure, but it looks like they just added 200 contracts. That is the case. It looks like it's gonna be the same case for NVIDIA. They just added 4,500 contracts. So if we go back here, we can see they added 200 contracts to the synthetic and to the short call that expires next week. Um, so the short call for this week that uh, expires tomorrow, 150 strike price, we're underneath that 12%. And then the short call for next week is only 143. Um, well, it's only got 200 contracts, so it's no big deal, I guess. Uh, but we're underneath that one, 7%. 
but uh looking at that first one with the 150 stripe price we're underneath that yeah the 12 percent which is about um was that 17 ish dollars possible upside for misty here is about two dollars and 40 cents for that one i'm sorry i'm just looking and also, so if you look at the synthetic, it's a 140 stripe price. So if they did actually get up to the 150, that makes them positive above $10 above their synthetic. Then you would expect that the market value here would be positive per share versus that negative dollar. Um, so that could get, you know, quite a bit of upside there too. Again, if the market value, it will not always, um, it just depends on, you know, whatever it's valued at for the market at the close of the day for the holdings. All right, so if we go into Nephile, we have a short call of 705 strike price. We were above that yesterday. We dropped um, over $16 yesterday, Netflix did. So uh, we are now below that 2%. So possible upside here for Nephile of about $0.34. Cents. Which is interesting because this thing only dropped about 17 cents yesterday. I'm sorry, 18 cents. All right. Uh, no bot call for this one. Then we have NVIDIA, and we already talked about it. The shares, you can see that they added 4,500 contracts to the synthetic, and they created a new call for next week. A new short call so we can see here we have the two short calls we have the 113 strike price for this week which nvidia fell yesterday a few dollars so we're only 37 cents above this at the as of the close yesterday in the end of course that's 83,000 contracts then the short call for next week is 120 which is only 4,500 contracts um, we do not have a bulk call for this one. So if the debt market does continue positive today, um, yeah, you might see the upside based on the synthetic, um, but you're not going to see, but maybe a couple of cent upside for the short call for that one that expires next week. Right now, it actually shows to close out the one that it's going to expire on Friday, $18.4 million to close that one out. And that was with it only being 37 cents above the strike price. Uh, again, no bot, no bot call for this one. So I don't know what's going to happen to NVIDIA today. Of course, again, like I said, the market was like already the futures this morning was up 2% or something, which then scares me because... That makes me wonder if the market's just going to, you know, I say crash, but that's so dramatic, right? But if the market's just going to go straight down when the, uh, it actually opens, just because it's up so much in pre-market, it's just hard to believe, or the futures, I guess. This is hard to believe that it's going to continue up uh, throughout the day. So, we'll see. Let's move on through. We have OARC here with a 46.50 stripe price We're underneath that 1% or 32 cents. Possible upside for the short call for OARC of 7 cents, no bulk call. Then we have PayPay here. Ooh, this one went up about $1.50 yesterday, so our short call of $70. We are above that 4% or $3.12, so no upside here for the short call. We do have a bulk call, though, with a 72.50 stripe price. We are above that 1% or 62 cents there moving on to smcy this one i you know i mentioned yesterday probably for the first time to uh, use extreme caution with this one and if you don't know what i mean go look at the chart for this year uh, and look at the prices that it's been we what we looked at it i think yesterday 200 and something up to 1100 and something just this year so um be careful but short calls 462.50 and 470 looks like this one went down yesterday we're underneath those strike prices six and seven percent 
Um, we don't really have a lot of um, stuff here, but I mean, we might have a couple of dollar increase here for the short calls on SMCY. And remember, the reason it's so much is because it's a $50 stock. Snowy. With this, sorry, I start looking at everything. We had a short call of 117 strike price. Uh, we're below that 5%. Uh, possible upside here for snow of about 88 cents for the short call. We do not have a bulk call for this one. Squee, we have a short call, 66 strike price. We did come down some yesterday, but we're still above it, 1% or 74 cents. So no upside for the short call. We do have a bulk call of 69 strike price. Uh, we're underneath that one, 3%. Moving on to Tesla, we have two short calls, 230, 240. Um, we're underneath those 1 and 5%. The majority of the contracts are at the 230 strike price, which were only about $2.80 below that at close yesterday. So upside here for about $0.15 cents for the short calls. We do not have a bought call, any bought calls for Tesla. Then we have TSMY. We have a short call that expires next week. 175 strike price. We're underneath that 4%. Possible upside here, about 88 cents for the short call for TSMY. Do not have a bought call for this one. Then moving on to Zomo. We have synthetics that expire this uh, week. 115 strike price. We're under that right now, about 42 cents. That's actually really good. Um, so they'll close that out today or tomorrow. Thank goodness, not for a lot of money, because it's very rare, uh, you know, that we can come back like that and still be, like, like right at that price after months. Um, but anyway, we have the short call here for 112 strike price. We are over that 2%, or $2.58, so no upside for the short call. We do have the bought call with 114 strike price. We are above that 1%, or $0.58, cents. Um, so it's helped offsetting some of our costs there. All right, so let's go down to the short ETFs real quick. So we did have some trades, but not on crash. So we have the short put of 212. We're currently above that 3%. Then we have dips. So let's see. It looks like they just added 75. Uh, no, not added, but added overall 75. But let's make sure. Dips, yep, 75 contracts it was added um, to all the areas. And meaning just a new 75 contracts. Now, we have, no, what happened here? Okay, so I don't know if they just put this on the trades with the wrong expiration or what, uh, but you can see that we had the 107 at a November 15th expiration. The new one they just put in here was same strike price, but uh, October expiration. Um, so that could be an error. Um, if so, then they should. We'll probably get that corrected. You can see they did add the 75 to the, the long call that expires in November. And then they created a new short put for next week with the 110 strike price. So we have two short puts, 111 that expires this week and 110 for next week. And we're above both of those. Uh, we're above those 2 and 3%. Then we have Fiat here. So let's see what they did. Nope, sorry. All right, so it looks like they closed out of about a fourth of their uh, shares. And then went ahead and pushed those out to next week. That's odd, a fourth. I've seen them do halves, but not, not a fourth. I don't know. Uh, but if we move over here, we can see here we have the new short put for next week with a 152.50 strike price that we're above 7%. Then we also have the short put for this week with a 150 strike price we're above 8%. Moving on to YQQQ, we have our short put with a 442 strike price. We're above that one 7%. And then last, we have YBIT. Well, I guess it's not last, is it? But we have YBIT here. We have our synthetic uh, $28 strike price that expires. We're underneath that 35%. And then we have our two short calls, 18 to 18.50. We're above the 18.19 cents and we're below the 18.50, 31 cents. So, and our contracts are split. 
so you might see a couple of cent upside here for the short call itself um, no bought call and these all expire tomorrow and then I, I think I had forgotten at least once but just to go down here we have our YMAX uh, 68 stripe price for um, Mirni or Moderna. Uh, of course, we're over that a few cents. I think it was we closed at 68.90 something. But then we have a bulk call at the $72 stripe price. And then our synthetics here that expire next week with the $85 stripe price. So I don't know if that means once it expires next week, they're good to go to then add Moderna back to this. If that's past the 30 days, it sounds about right. Um, but we will see how that goes. Anyway, I think that is it. And, uh, well, you know what? I'll just do this one thing. Because somebody did make a comment this morning about wondering how today's going to go and how many of these will be above their strike prices. So, just because I haven't been doing the daily videos, let's just look. So, here in the left columns, um, our men and max or max and men strike prices there. We can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them are um, already maxed out on their strike prices. And then you can see in the next columns that I haven't shown yet, but I went ahead and added the bought calls onto here. Uh, so we could see, you know, if I go back to doing the daily videos, the daily roundup, then you can see the, um, you know, the roll up of that. But so far, so we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only eleven out of the twenty-five um, have a bought call. So the ones with bought calls are AIYY, AMDY, MZ, Apley, Coney, GUI, JPMO, Murney, Pepe, Squee, and Zomo. And see, I would have thought the ones with bought calls would be things like Tesla, Nvidia, Misty. I mean, right? The ones that we normally have issues with. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. And then just knowing the history of SMCY, you know, that's probably a good candidate too. But again, I don't trade options. I'm just you know, looking, I just look at the data. Um, I don't know. What are y'all thought? Y'all's thoughts? What do y'all think we should have bought calls on? Uh, normally, right? We know it's not always a normal whatever, but I would say definitely, let's see. So let's look at the IV. So here's our IV, except for Dizzo, apparently. Um, so Coney, 67%. Misty's 88%, NVIDIA 49%, SMCY 72%, Tesla 63%. Yeah, so pretty much all the ones that I mentioned were our higher IV ones. So <clears throat> just looking at that, I feel like, you know, I don't know. There's like over 50% than it should have a bought call. Mernie's 56 percent anyway let me know what y'all think I'm just curious to to know if anybody uh, has similar thoughts or different thoughts and as to why uh, I'm just looking at the IV and the ones that usually are you know more volatile anyway I will talk to y'all later bye